the emergence of immunotherapy and its transition from second line now to first line, either as single age or in combination with chemo, has really opened up the door for new approaches in the second line. And ironically, I think we will see docetaxel, either alone or more likely in combination with ramucirumab, reemerge from third line to second line. If we're giving immunotherapy in combination with chemo, our major option at the time of disease progression will be docetaxel and ramucirumab. A question remains, is that really the optimal regimen? Certainly that combination is better than docetaxel alone. We've seen data in rapid progressors that it may even be better yet, uh, particularly for those whose disease progresses within uh, nine to 10 uh, weeks of the initiation of uh, treatment. Uh, there's about a three, three and a half month improvement in overall survival. Uh, frankly, a more pronounced difference than we see in the overall population. But I think that uh, the adoption of uh, concurrent uh, immuno and chemo opens up the door to additional innovative approaches. And for instance, we are now uh, about to look at, in phase two, in individuals whose disease has progressed on maintenance therapy after four and a half months, a unique combination, taking a weekly taxane, either paclitaxel or NABPAC, combining it with ramucirumab and reintroducing carboplatin. There's no reason to believe that those folks are inherently carboplatin refractory. We have uh, in small cell and ovarian cancer uh, already defined this notion of platinum sensitive, platinum refractory. The same uh, observation potentially applies to non-small cell. So this gives us an opportunity to actually test new combinations in the second line setting. Uh, a lot of my peers and colleagues are worried uh, that we're exhausting uh, all our uh, therapies at the very beginning that we'll have fewer choices. I'd argue the opposite. I think we have more choices uh, uh, in light of the immunotherapy era and the uh, potential options that exist in the second line. So the availability of the current data uh, with the IO combinations to me suggests that uh, most of the treatment naive patients who walk into our clinics now are going to be treated with some sort of an IO combination. And I think at this point, again, that's going to be IO plus chemotherapy. Um, I think the um, efficacy and safety data is a support of that. So at the time of progression, then the options are to go back to um, our standard chemotherapy drugs that we were using, for instance, docetaxel. Now, in that category, obviously, the results of um, docetaxel plus ramucirumab versus docetaxel alone suggest that there is uh, a little bit more clinical efficacy for the combination with docetaxel and ramucirumab. You can argue that the trial that showed doce plus ramucirumab to be better than doce alone was done in a patient population that had not necessarily seen a lot of IO up front. So maybe the tumor microenvironment is a little bit different. Um, but I think the combination still is a valid and reasonable option for patients who qualify for the combination of ramucirumab plus docetaxel. Um, I think, again, there you have to worry about whether a patient can tolerate a, a double treatment. Um, after all, these are patients who've been through chemotherapy, IO, uh, or an IO-IO combination. Um, and as long as uh, they qualify for, you know, some of the restrictions that comes naturally with using a drug like ramucirumab, if they're not in place, yeah, I'm not, um, uh, uh, you know, against using that combination. It's just that, again, you know, if, if a patient has a poor performance status because of progression, are they really candidates for a more aggressive approach or not? So I think because IO has moved to the front line, um, then in the second line setting, we're going to be looking at patients who are probably going to get, you know, outside of a clinical trial, some sort of a chemotherapy. Now, interestingly, I think there are going to be patients who get chemo plus IO and they come off of treatment for whatever reason, either duration or some toxicity, and then have stable disease for a very long time. We haven't really decided as a group what that period of time is. I mean, clearly, I think a patient who progresses as they're getting treated with immunotherapy has a different tumor and probably requires something different, as opposed to a patient who got his or her last dose of immunotherapy a year and a half ago and have enjoyed a disease-free interval and now all of a sudden they have progression. So I think you have to sort of identify these patients and see if a patient who comes a year and a half 
after treatment, still a candidate for an immune oncology drug, maybe that's what you want to use instead of going back to traditional chemotherapy. So I think we're going to have to start stratifying these patients by how fast or how slowly they're progressing on their prior lines of um, immunotherapy-based regimens.